up guys welcome back to my channel so today i have well i'm actually gonna let him introduce himself but i have a special guest with me and if you just want to tell a little bit about yourself that'd be awesome all right well thank you for having me hannah uh i'm dallas and i happen to be the creator of the chosen which is i assume the reason that you're wanting to talk to me i i'm guessing it's not <laughs> just i heard the name dallas jenkins and i want to talk to him uh it's uh the the, the chosen has uh, been a show that i created a couple years ago and I guess over the last couple of years it's been this crazy ride that uh, we're going on and uh, yeah, I've been my husband father of four four teenagers I've got wow. uh, I've been been making movies and whatnot for about 20 years until the wow. chosen just kind of took over my life and has become uh, kind of the biggest biggest thing I've been doing wow that is so awesome so I guess the first question I have for you today is what is your story behind the creation of the show? How did you get started? And how did the Lord lead you to create The Chosen? Well, what's interesting is I think The Chosen was birthed in many ways by failure. Um, I had been doing movies, you know, and short films and even a couple of TV movies for over 15 years and it had various levels of success, but uh, it wasn't until a feature film that I was able to do. I made it in 2016 and it came out in 2017. And it was with some really huge Hollywood producers. And I had finally arrived in Hollywood like, I, like I'd like i always wanted. I mean, I'd made some movies, but they were all independent, meaning I hadn't, they, they weren't financed by big producers or studios. They were financed by private investors. And and uh, But this this oh. one, it was called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone, a movie that I'm still proud of, but it was, it was this big opportunity to really do a Hollywood funded movie and get out in theaters all over the country. And then it completely bombed at the box office. Oh and no. All of those big producers who were already planning on doing more movies with me, um, all pulled out of future projects. And so in just a couple of hours, when the numbers came in, I went from being a director with a bright future to a director with no future. And that moment, I think what happened that day with my wife and how God really spoke to us and made it very clear that yes, that movie wasn't successful, but that that wasn't my job to worry about. My job was just to, as, as, as my wife said, um, as God kind of laid it on her heart. And then there was this other guy, just a guy I barely know who reached out. Um, everyone was like, God was laying it on multiple people's hearts the story of the feeding of the 5,000 in the Gospels. And wow. that story, as we read it, we noticed two things that stood out. One was, and this is, I think, a life lesson for all of us, and it was especially for me. One was that when the disciples came to Jesus in the Gospels, in this, when, when Jesus had been preaching to these thousands of people, and they said, the people are really hungry. They need to, they need to go home and get food. Yeah. And Jesus said, well, no, because if we send them home, they'll faint along the way. That's how, that's how hungry they are. Now, how did Jesus know that? Well, it was his fault that they were so hungry. He's the one who been <laughs> speaking for three days, you know? And so that really made us realize that sometimes God is involved in the hunger that makes you need a miracle or makes you need God more. Wow. And um, we felt like God was showing us that that he had been involved in what was going on, including the failure part. Wow. And then the second, the second thing was, um, and this was, this was sent to me by a stranger just who just told me, God wanted me to tell you this. I mean, he didn't, he didn't know much about, we didn't even know each other all that much. He didn't know much about the project, but he said, God told me to tell you, and this was on the same day as my wife being led to that story. He said, remember, your job is not to feed the 5,000. It's only to provide the loaves and fish. Wow. And that realization is a huge life changer because I'm someone who, if something doesn't work well, or I'm always trying to please the audience, I'm always trying to please other people. And I mean, you run a, a YouTube channel, you, you have a social media, you know, organization that you're building. And, and a lot of that's measured in likes and shares and views and you're constantly focused on the numbers and I've gotten to the place because of what happened with my movie and because of what God shared with me 
that I genuinely don't care about that stuff anymore as long as yeah. what I'm doing is what God wants me to do. And that's what made me open-minded to first doing a short film about the birth of Christ from the perspective yeah. of shepherds, which I did for my church. It was just for my church's Christmas Eve service um, shot on my friend's farm in Illinois. And it felt, wow. like a big, it felt like a big step down from doing a Hollywood movie, but yeah. I was just doing whatever loaves and fishes I had, you know? And, yeah, that's so and awesome. that led to be, uh, my idea to do a, a show, a multi-season show about Christ. That led to the idea of having it be crowdfunded. So using that short film to generate interest to see if people would want to crowdfund and which led to shattering the all-time crowdfunding record of over, you know, we raised over $10 million from 19,000 people for season That's one. crazy. All of those things I thought were ridiculous. Yeah. But I was in a position where I was like, hey, loaves and fishes, not my job to worry about this. <laughs> so that's where I'm at now is I just, that's, that's how the chosen came to be was God really breaking me down and making me open to doing whatever, even if it didn't make sense. And that's been the story from the whole time. I mean, from the beginning to just, where, as I talk to you right now, as I'm sitting here in Utah about to film season two, um, I wouldn't have predicted any of this, but I don't <laughs> yeah. really think about, the, I don't think about the future much. And I, the fact that The Chosen has started to really blow up over the last few months, um, then I'm like, oh, that's great. I, I, uh, but when I sit in front of the computer to write season two, it's not like all the fan craziness about season one makes writing season two any easier. So yeah. I still have to deliver. I still have six more seasons to do. And that's, that's the challenge. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's so awesome. How, you know, when you're just obedient to God, what he can do through you, through the chosen. Um, I know one of the things that personally has, I would say impacted me is when I watched the season, the whole first season of the chosen, I loved how real you made Jesus seem. And I'm sure you probably hear that often, but it's so cool how he actually seems like human and many shows about like Jesus and the disciples and just stuff like that. He doesn't really seem real almost. And yeah. that is one thing I just loved and how he joked and how he just laughed with the disciples. He was just friends with them, you know? Um, so what went into like the whole like decision-making process and making Jesus like seem that way? Well, I, have seen, I mean, I've been a believer as long as I can remember. I've seen all the Jesus movies and miniseries. And I think this show is in many ways a response to that. It's like, how come when I watch those movies, I never see a Jesus who I would really want to follow and get to know. <laughs> yeah. he, seems, he seems kind of boring or very distant. And I think that's true in a lot of art. A lot of Christian art oftentimes portrays Jesus very, like he's, he's this far away being and, and, um, and you only, you know, when you do these movies, you just kind of go from miracle to miracle, Bible verse to Bible verse, and you never really get to know his followers. You don't get to know the people who experienced his miracles. Yeah. So the decision was two, twofold. One, I want you to see Jesus through the eyes of those who actually met him. And yeah. they are, if you recognize what their struggles were and their questions and their doubts and their challenges, and if you go, oh, I have the same issues, and maybe the solution for them can be the same as the solution for me. So that's part of it. But also, I believe that by showing Jesus' humanity and showing him making his own food and starting his own fire and stretching his sore muscles and joking with yeah. his friends and laughing at jokes and um, dancing with his friends at a, at a wedding, it actually makes his divinity and the fact that he is the son of God even more impactful. Because you're yeah. like, wow, the creator of the universe wanted to be with us. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what Emmanuel means, God with us, which we sometimes think about with Christmas, you know, Emmanuel, God with us, but it really applied to his whole life. And he did miracles sometimes just because someone asked him to, because he was with his friends. I mean, it was, it, so when you really show that, I think it makes people feel like they're even more connected to Jesus. And that's what we're hearing from people who watch the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. Like, I was crying the first episode. I was like, this is amazing. Um, I just loved it so much. So what was, like, in making the show, I know you have to be careful. And I know I've heard a lot of things like, well, is the show biblically accurate? Because I um, actually, uh, you know, talked about you guys in one of my last YouTube videos, and people were asking me that. And so what was one of the things that 
went into that and you just have to be careful and like just being careful what you made Jesus say and the disciples say and stuff like that. What went into that? Yeah, first of all, I'm sorry, there's someone mowing the lawn outside, so you might start hearing a lawnmower, so I apologize. <laughs> You're good. Um, You're good. But, this is real time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, that's a really good question. And I think that anytime that we show something from Scripture, it's accurate. We don't change anything. We don't try to, we don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to say something different. So whenever you see a story or a moment or a scene from the Gospels, we don't change anything. But yes, we do add backstory, historical context, uh, cultural context, and yes, some artistic imagination. And I take that very seriously. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very strong believer. I love the Bible. I was a Bible major in college. Wow. Um, I don't want to ever contradict the intentions or character of Jesus or the Gospels. So yes, I think that's yeah. what people are responding to when they watch the show and Episode one, for example, I mean, there's nothing from the Bible for the first, you know, 40 minutes or so. I mean, there's the people that you recognize and yeah. you see their jobs and you see all things that we know about them from scripture, but there's no scripture verses until the very end. And so we make sure that it's plausible, like that it's something that we believe actually could happen and that yeah. fits with the character and intentions of the gospels. And we also make sure that, um, Anytime, of course, we give, put words in Jesus's mouth, we're especially yeah. careful. You know, we don't yeah. want to ever have Jesus say something that doesn't fit into his character. So oh, yeah. for, for some people, that's not enough. For some people, they're just still going to be uncomfortable. We've heard from people, who, from people who just say, I can't watch anything that's not just a direct, exact recreation of scripture. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's fine. That's fine. But I would just say, and then there, there's other people who say, well, you know, you're not supposed to add to the Bible. To which I would say, well, we're not the Bible. You know, your, your Bible has not changed since The Chosen came out. So <laughs> yeah. um, we're a TV yeah. show based on the Bible, based on history, based on multiple um, sources of truth. Um, and we don't want any that contradict each other. But, um, you know, I think if you watch the show, you'll see this is clearly made by someone who loves scripture and clearly made by someone oh, yeah. who loves this and isn't trying to say anything new. So it's delicate and it's challenging um, and we take it very seriously, but we do believe that um, by creating and, uh, and, and utilizing some of this backstory and context, that it just helps the scriptures come to life. And people are now reading the Bible more than ever because of the show. It's not a replacement for the Bible. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I love like how you said it's not a replacement for the Bible. Your Bible hasn't changed. Like people still got to read the word themselves. You know, the chosen is not a replacement for reading scripture, reading the word of God and spending time with Jesus. So yeah. yeah. And if people were saying, if people were saying, oh, now I don't have to read the Bible because I've got the chosen, that would be a problem. And I would say, whoa, 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 no, don't do that. I'm a flawed, (laughs) sinful guy. I'm not claiming that I'm anointed by God or inspired by God. I mean, I believe that that's, that's happened on this project sometimes, but I'm not going to claim spiritual authority. What I am going to point out, though, is that the proof is in what people are saying, which is I'm reading my Bible more than ever because of the show. Yes. I feel closer to Jesus yeah. because of the show. And the, the, the show is drawing them more to the Bible as opposed to replacing it. Yeah, praise God. That's so awesome. So I, I even like how you guys put in the beginning of – the uh, season that you do ad lib, you have to do that. So you can even put a disclaimer at the beginning of the show um, is what I remember seeing because it's been like a while since I've watched the first episode. As you've gone through making this series, what is one way that you've seen the Lord really move and maybe how he helped you create an episode or just something cool that's happened on set? Yeah, I mean, I would say when it comes to the writing of it is that's where most of the ideas come is when we're writing. And it has happened many, many times where um, something, an idea comes to me and it kind of comes all at once. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's really powerful. And even though it's a small thing, like Jesus winking at Barnaby in episode two, or Jesus talking to Simon's wife in episode seven, when or episode eight, when he tells her um, why he's going to heal her mother. Yeah. And these little things that come and, and I'm like, oh, that's really powerful. And it moves me. And then I'll see when people watch the show, they'll comment on those very things. And it just becomes clear that like, as long as I keep listening 
Yeah. And really, really making sure that when I'm writing, that I'm really trying to be open to something God may have to say that, that it's going to continue to be strong. And the writing has had that happen many, many times on set. Um, for sure. We've had, you know, there's a, there's a video on our YouTube channel. If you just look up the chosen, we're easy to find. Um, it's called the miracle of the miracle of the fish. And maybe you can link to it if, 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 if possible, but, um, but it's, it's a, it's the backstory of the scene in episode four when Jesus tells Peter to lay it, throw his net out after Peter's been, Simon's been struggling all night to catch fish and this miraculous yeah. fish comes. We tell the story of how that whole scene was many ways miraculous because four days before we were scheduled to shoot that scene, we didn't have fish, we didn't have a boat and we didn't have a lake. And wow. how all of those things came together was just so clearly God kind of having this project in his hands. And then also on the set, we have it happen all the time where an actor is, is doing a scene, uh, especially with Jesus, and they're quoting something from scripture or scripture is being quoted to them or they're being asked to make a decision, their character is, to follow Jesus or not follow Jesus. And they get like overwhelmingly emotional, like even to the point that wasn't in the script, but they just can't control it. And they talk about how they feel like during the scene, they were like, I, I couldn't control myself or I felt this wave of emotion come over me. And, you know, m many of our actors aren't even uh, believers or didn't know much about the Bible before this show. And yeah. I feel like so many times it's been clear that God has, has like used the script or used the, the filming of these scenes to kind of pierce hearts. And it, and it shows you that even when you're acting, you know, scripture and facing uh, some of these decisions that these people actually had to face, about who Jesus was, it's going to, it's going to impact you. you whether you make the right choice or not, <laughs> yeah. you're going to be, yeah. be forced to make a choice. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, I, I actually saw people saying that too, like, um, oh, well, The Chosen, like, most of the actors aren't believers or something like that. And, like, you know, uh, I actually saw something, somebody say um, something about the actor of Jesus or something like that. I'm not sure. You know, there's stuff all over the internet. I mean, I'm sure you're used to it. Um, but well, it's because, I think it, it's because he's, he's, he's a Catholic and he's, he's a proud Catholic. And so you've got people of other faith traditions saying, oh, well, that's a bad thing because Catholics are bad or Catholics saying <laughs> that I'm bad because I'm an evangelical or LDS folks concerned that I'm an evangelical or evangelicals saying, oh, you're working oh, with yeah. LDS folks. How dare you? I mean, it's all, yeah. all colors of the rainbow all get skeptical of each other, but I've just made it very clear from the beginning, like whether you're not a believer or whether you are a believer, but a different kind of believer, or you are LDS or Catholic or Jewish or evangelical or whatever, if you're going to help this show get out to the world, and if you're going to make this show better, which I say up front, it's an evangelically minded show, yeah. I'm a conservative evangelical, or, um, but if, if you're not bothered by the show itself, but you're bothered by who helps make this show go out to the world, then then I don't, then fine. Don't watch the show. Like it's, it's like, we may not be the show for you, but, um, but yeah, the fact that we've got people of all different faith traditions or even non-belief involved, not involved in the writing of the show, not in the producing of it, meaning the, the, the content is still the content, but um, if you're going to be making the show better, then of course I want you involved. And maybe uh, if people are concerned that someone involved isn't a believer, well, why wouldn't you just be excited that they're part of this project and perhaps could be impacted by the content? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for I, sure. I just, I just don't have time. I just don't have time, or nor do I really care if people are like, well, I love the content, but I'm not going to watch <laughs> it because of this yes. person is involved. I'm like, all right, fine. Don't watch the show. I don't care. Yes. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that too. You know, I want people to hear this um, and stuff, and especially just reading comments. And I'm like, you know, it's crazy. But yeah, I love that all what you said. And I totally agree. And it's cool how people can be ministered to if they're working on set or they're actors or whatever, and they're reading the script and the uh, scriptures. So you mentioned that season two, you're in Utah right now filming it, right? So I know, like, I saw some update videos on the Facebook page, you saying you weren't sure, like, you know, what are we gonna do? We don't really have a place to film, you know, COVID this year, it's been crazy. So what's something we can look forward to? Um, I, how has God led you to the place where you're filming at now? I don't know if there's anything you want to share. Yeah. yeah, I posted a video about a month and a half ago. I went back to the farm where we filmed the Christmas short film that I did. 
because that was a That's place so cool. where God did something beautiful, you know, where he, he, he took something small and, and, and grew it and he showed it just his faithfulness. And I was struggling because I was like, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if we, we like you said, we don't have a place to film. COVID has delayed things. I don't know when or if we're going to film. And I was just confused. And so I went to that place just to talk to God and to mostly listen to God. And I recorded a video while I was there because I was feeling encouraged to share with people that even though I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, I do know that God will be faithful. And yeah. whatever that looks like is fine. But I can trust that because he's been faithful. And there's this great worship song that I quoted that's, that's um, called Faithful Now. And it says, um, I'm holding on to faith because I know you'll make a way. And I don't always get to see and I don't always understand, but I will believe it. And then wow. it talks about you've made mountains move. You've made giants fall. You've used songs of praise to shake prison walls. And then this great line, I will preach to my fear and I will speak to my doubt that you've made mountains move. Or no, you've been faithful then and you'll be faithful now. So that day that I released that video, I said, you know, we're, we're in this weird situation where we keep getting told no. And, but that day the video came out and hundreds of thousands of people were praying and watching it. You know, that video was one of our most popular videos for some reason. It was just me holding up the phone. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and then that day, like no's became yeses and the clouds parted and miracles happened. And the fact wow. that I'm sitting here in Utah talking to you because in two weeks, we're going to be give, begin filming episode, uh, season two on this unbelievable set in Goshen, Utah, which wow. is owned by the owned by the LDS church. And they've never let anyone outside use it, you know, even though it's been around for 10 years. And now they're allowing us to use this because they love the message of the show. Wow. And we've been able to make use of this unbelievably jaw dropping set. Um, and so that's like so many times God has just opened doors that I never would have thought could open um, for the sake of this project. But it always comes when after I give up trying, you know, I just, I don't want to keep fighting for things. I don't want to be begging for things. I'm just going to surrender and uh, do my part and bring my five loaves and fish, but yeah. the results are not up to me. Yeah. Wow. That's so good. It's so cool how God brought you that. And like I said earlier, like, it's so cool when you're just obedient and you just surrender and you're like, God, I don't know what to do. Like he steps in and he's like, you know, here's a place to film and he's got it all under control. If he wants it to happen, you know, it's going to happen. So that's awesome. Um, so is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, maybe a way that we can support you. I know I'm going to link stuff down in the description. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else you want to share. Well, I think it's just that, you know, I think some people, because the show isn't on Netflix or any of the big networks, sometimes they hear about it, but they don't know where to go. Or they're like, uh, sounds like there's new technology with the, with the show and I'm not used to that or whatever it is. Um, and then they eventually want to watch it because they hear good things about it. But yeah. I want to just let you know, it's a lot more easy than you think. You know, um, the, the chosen app is how to watch it. It's totally free. All eight episodes, every country in the world, totally free. So you just go to wherever you get your apps, look up the chosen, we're easy to find, and you can be watching within two minutes. Now, if you think, well, I don't want to watch a show on my phone. I'm like, well, neither do I, I get it. And VidAngel, yeah. our distribution partner, literally invented technology that allows you to connect directly to your streaming device, Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, Chromecast, you know, HDMI cord, whatever it is, you can yeah. connect directly from your phone to your TV and watch it on a big screen in full resolution. And it's totally free. We don't ask you to pay anything, subscribe to anything. You don't need to sign up, give your email address, whatever. It's totally free. Yeah. Now that said, if you're wondering, well, how do we make future seasons if it's totally free? Yes, we do need people if they want. If they don't want to, or if they can't afford to, great. Enjoy the free show. That's why people yeah. pay it forward for you. But if you do, you know, again, the shirt you're wearing right now, which is really cool, it's the um, opening, Chosen shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's the, uh, the opening credits logo. Yes, um, yeah. And then I'm wearing one, it says Binge Jesus, which a lot of people have been doing, uh, you know, especially during COVID, just binging on The Chosen. Um, that kind of merchandise, when people buy that, uh, it does go towards future episodes and seasons. It allows us to keep the lights on and do the show. Um, yeah, it's paying awesome. it forward. Is, you know, if you love the show and you want to pay it forward, we have the opportunity for you to do that where it allows us to continue to give it to other people for free. And then there's DVDs. There's a devotional book called The Chosen 40 Days with Jesus that's become a bestseller, something that my wife and her writing partner wrote, which takes you even deeper into the stories. 
But my thing is, I, I don't want any of that to sound like we're trying to sell you stuff. We're trying to promote just the chosen. We really do try to create products that are going to start conversations that are going to allow you to dig deeper into the gospels, into the stories, into these people, into Jesus. And uh, look, if you don't want to do it, and if and if we're not going to do future episodes and seasons, that's fine. That's not up to me. But I think some people yeah. want that. And so if you want that, uh, we're let's let's go on this ride together. Yeah, that's so cool. So they can actually pay it forward by going onto the app, or is it on the website as well? Yeah, it's on the app, or it's you know the website, uh, which is the. I, mean, I don't want to give a bunch of websites because I know people will forget. So yeah. people can make it in their description. But thechosen.tv, yes, yes. www.thechosen.tv. That'll give you the opportunity to buy the DVDs, buy the book, uh, pay it forward, but it's also all in the app as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I appreciate you sharing. Um, before we head off, do you mind if I just pray over you really quick and over season two? Absolutely, I can do that. <laughs> Okay. Okay, Lord, I pray over Dallas right now that you would just guide him and guide him as he writes this script for season two, that it would just be inspired by you and that you would just give him the words to say and just lead and guide all the actors and the set and just help everything to run smoothly. Just give him wisdom, guidance, and direction and protect them all from all evil in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for coming on here and doing this. I'm so excited to have you on here. And I know a lot of people who watch my channel love the chosen. So I'm sure they'll love watching this and just seeing you share more of your heart. Thanks so much for having me on. We will have to do it again uh, after season two is out. Yes, that'd be so awesome. I'd love to have you back on. So yeah, guys, make sure that you click the links in the description below. I'm sharing everything down below, how to support their website, the app. So make sure you go download the app and watch The Chosen today for free. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, go check all that stuff out and I will see you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Make sure you check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there.